You may recall a short while ago that I covered The Room and I gave my thoughts on that unique work of art, I think is a nice way to put it. And I originally did that entirely to do this video that you're seeing here. It was entirely based on the fact that The Disaster Artist was out on digital release and I was like, oh, I can watch that, but I may need to look at The Room first. But I needed to step back. I needed to let things settle. I needed to get a better grasp on the room and save myself, I suppose, a little from the room verse as well. It's a very unique piece, as I say. But I'm glad I did. I'm glad I came to it, a, you know, a while down the line because there are some people who it's been like 15 years, perhaps, since they last saw the room. They saw it when it was first released. They were in that theatre the first time, and that's been that's been it. So on that basis, it's quite a short wait. But I did enjoy it for what it is. You know, James and Dave Franco did a great job with their parts as Greg and Tommy. And frankly, everyone brought um, the right aspects of each of the characters that we see. We've seen obviously a lot of the actors in the room. We know what their mannerisms are like. And there's a great piece at the end of the film that shows these side-by-side -side comparisons. And everyone was pretty much perfect. There were minor timing differences, but for the most part it was spot on. Again, special praise goes to James Franco for nailing that accent, which we will get to in a short while. But as a film on its own, I think you could watch it without having seen The Room. It gives you a better understanding and perhaps more of a, an insider's perspective if you've seen The Room. But if you haven't, you can enjoy it as an interesting piece about a very strange man. But those hoping for answers to the age-old questions may be disappointed. We do get those questions asked many times. Even at the end it says, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna get those answers. And the three big Tommy Wiseau questions are where does the money come from? Which is a big one. Where are you from? Because that's not a New Orleans accent. That's not a bio accent at all. And how old are you? Now in the film these questions are asked at various times, just Sometimes a throwaway, just, just want to get to know you, but there is a great piece towards the end where Greg feels that Tommy's ruining his life. He's impeding his growth as an actor for Tommy's own benefit, if that makes sense. And these questions get asked again in a very aggressive way, and I love the fact that the questions are still a core part of the film as we move through. Because, yeah, I mean, Megan Mullally plays Greg's mom, and I love that woman to pieces. Um, and it's nice to see her here because she's one as well. She comes forward going, OK, how old are you? You're 19, really. Um, but Tommy's always evaded these questions. It's always been a case of my life is a closed book. And while he has, and we see it in the film as well, while he's embraced the ridiculousness of the room, whilst he has come to accept that, OK, as films go, it's pretty terrible, and spun it as, yes, my intent was always to make something this funny. He's still a mystery wrapped in an enigma, wrapped in a weird accent. Something about him is just larger than life. He transcends the character that he is. He is such an intriguing individual. And I don't think anyone else could have made the room. This becomes more apparent as you see in interviews and as you see this film. Provided that Greg's book that this film is based on was at least 75% accurate to Tommy's character. He is just such a, a once-in-a-lifetime person. And in a way, even though he did perhaps in, impede Greg's progress and development, I think Greg's the better for it. I do think that it was a good decision, though, for them to remain friends. You know, they do go out on the circuits together. They go to midnight screenings of the room that still occur to this day and go and talk about it at fan conventions, etc. It was a good decision. And The Disaster Artist as a, as a film, I don't think would have been made without Tommy's blessing. And it must have that because he's been on the, on the press tours with James Franco. He's got a wonderful cameo at the end, which I'm not going to spoil for anyone who hasn't seen it, but it's great. It's definitely worth sitting and waiting for. And I just think that there is, I said this when I, when I looked at the room itself, I think there is a good person inside of Tom Wiseau. And he wanted the world to see that. 
he saw himself as a hero. Everyone saw him and went, you've got a villain's demeanour and appearance. And, of course, the accent really kind of helped that typecasting that, that they wanted to do to him. I did see a great comment back from, from my good friend Tim of, of saying that maybe it was like his good guy fantasy more than autobiographical in some way. And maybe that's it. As we learn more about him, I think he just wants to be seen as a good guy. He's perhaps, again, taking what we see in the film as truth, or mostly truth. He's perhaps manipulative and selfish and doesn't want people to really give it to him straight and tell him that he's not going to make it. He wants the world to work the way he wants it to work. And we all do to a degree, but we learn over time how to just accept that you can change some things, but not everything. In fact, not many things. I think this is something that Tommy struggles with. He wants the world to work for him, and it never will in the way that he wants. But I do give praise for the fact that he's been willing to look past that and... Like I say, just take on board that it's such a ridiculous film and roll with it. He's got a renaissance now. He is famous. And if that is what he was after, if that's what he wanted out of this, then technically this is a success story, which is really hopeful when you think about, you know, about it. A guy had a dream and chased it and kind of in a roundabout way has finally made it come true after nearly 20 years from when it was first conceived as an idea that's something to hope for and I think it teaches us that you know the things that we want don't come the next day or even the next month not even the next year we might have a long decades wait but we will get there in a lot of cases unfortunately that's not always true subject to finding out where the rights lie I kind of when I was watching this I was thinking about my own experience of making a film a very weird and sort of unique film in its own right as well. And if people are up for it, you know, I'd be more than willing to talk about my experiences of that and how that's led to me being able to look, you know, at films in a different way. I think it's helped sort of get where I am, also making me a lot more comfortable in front of a camera. Um, but yeah, if I, if I can get clearance, I'm willing to talk about it if people want, so do let me know. But we'll be back with something different next week. So until then, as always, thanks for watching and take care.